harmony. And this is the power of truth. The power of truth. And I know that our speaker this morning will bring many, many seeds for you to plant. And maybe she will give you the water too to plant them to make sure that they grow. But seeds of truth, seeds, seeds of love, of light, of wisdom, of all the good that we can imagine to plant, to flourish, to grow, and to prosper. And so I invite you to put your hands together and welcome our speaker this morning, practitioner Carol Campbell. One more. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, here in beautiful, sunny, hot Kingston, Jamaica. Special welcome to those of you who are joining us on the World Wide Web today. This is Sunday, July the 28th, 2019. We're there already. You know what's coming, right? <laughs> There's a poem I'd like to read for you. It's attributed to an elder of the Hopi tribe in Arizona. I found it in a book called I've Been Thinking by best-selling author Maria Shriver. It's entitled A Hopi Elder Speaks. You have been telling the people that this is the 11th hour. Now you must go back and tell the people that this is the hour. And there are things to be considered. Where are you living? What are you doing? What are your relationships? Are you in your right relation? Where is your water? Know your garden. It is time to speak your truth. Create your community. Be good to each other. And do not look outside yourself for the leader. Then he clasped his hands together and smiling said, this could be a good time. I'm speaking to you today about time. The non-existence of time, actually. And the constancy of eternity now becomes the only relevant point of reference. Eternity is not a destination. We're living in eternity right now because eternity is, well, eternal. Unchanging, unchangeable existence. But in our livingness, we change. As we negotiate our mortality within a boundless eternity, as we navigate twists and turns, the storms, the calm seas, the mountain peaks, the valleys and ditches, the exhilaration of accomplishment or the crushing disappointment of a perceived failure, we change. And while we cannot control the eternality of existence, we have complete control over how we show up in every moment of conscious awareness. When I speak about conscious awareness, I mean the deliberate contact with an infinite intelligence that knows the how, the why, and the wherefore of life experiencing itself through me. It is what I believe life to be. And any belief that we hold to be true becomes true for us because our behavior will be adjusted to accommodate what we believe, not what someone else believes, what we believe. For instance, there was a time when people believed the world was flat and acted accordingly, fearful that they would fall off the edge if they ventured too close. But guess what? Along comes someone with a new possibility. Hey, maybe there's a way to go beyond the horizon, the perceived limitation. And lo and behold, a new world appeared. A new possibility was born. I'm going to give another talk on that another time. <laughs> Consciousness is the creative principle back of all life. Whatever we believe becomes our reality. And where do we believe this? In our mind. Our conscious awareness is what constitutes our belief system. 
So how do we choose to respond in any situation? Is it, oh, this is so great, it can't get any better than this, if it's good? Or how am I ever gonna claw my way out of this hellhole if it's bad? Neither of these responses will move you forward. One keeps you stuck in the past, the other keeps you stuck in a fearful future. The only place to grow is in the now. So then what do we do with the past? How do we handle those persistent memories that insist on making an appearance at the most inopportune times? You know, like uh, you're in the supermarket and you suddenly burst into tears at an unbidden heartbreak triggered by a bunch of grapes. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> or you feel yourself grinning from ear to ear to remember tenderness and then having to shyly try and avoid people's quizzical stares. <laughs> the thing is, memories don't leave like people do. And those experiences that touch our heart and soul tend to linger, tiptoeing through our conscious awareness. In reality, nothing is forgotten. And the memories that hang around help to color our experiences today help to shape our current attitudes surrounding happiness, joy, hope, faith, trust, love, confidence, self-worth, and so on. I have an affirmation for you. I'm gonna read it and then you say it with me. I am surrounded by an infinite law which receives the direct impress of my thought and acts creatively upon it. I'll break it down. Say it with me. I am surrounded by an infinite law which receives the direct impress of my thought and acts creatively upon it. Believe that. Eternal life is right here and right now. Right where we are, just as we are. Now here's a sticker. There is no other life out there, up there, or down there. Life is, and we live it. Eternity is, and we're in it. But because we're mostly not consciously aware of this, we're like fish swimming in water and wondering, where is the water and how can I find it? We are part of an infinite existence from which we can never be separated in life or in death. As we read in Psalm 139, verse 7 to 10, the King James Version says, and you all know this, whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. The eternity of which I speak is not that belief in eternal life after death. It is the unbroken existence, the immortal beingness of God, the life force living through us, animating and activating our vitality now and always. Here's another sticker. Every body dies. Every physical manifestation has an expiry date. But everybody lives in eternity. You and me. The opposite of death is birth. In the context of eternity, life cannot cease to live. There is a physical separation that every single one of us at some point will encounter. It is called death. And I'm deliberately not using the usual euphemisms, made transition, passed away, etc. This can be the death of a relationship, your changing waistline, a pet, <laughs> a cherished job, the loss of a loved one near and dear, any change in your relationship to a particular thing, person, or circumstance involves adopting a new perspective shaping a new set of circumstances and being flexible enough to embrace a new version of yourself as you try out 
other experiences being presented to you. March 26, 2019. Many of you are familiar with that date. It is a significant point of reference in a very personal story. That's the day my beloved sister died. That's the day the whole of Jamaica, and indeed many people in the diaspora, gasped in stunned, disbelieving silence and wept. That was the closing of a chapter and the story of a life, our life, that up until then had Dorain physically in it. And that life that included Dorain was only possible with her energy, her love, her passion, her compassion, her joie de vivre, her dedication. But the closing of a chapter doesn't necessarily signify the closing of the book. March 27th, 2019, a new chapter begins. But from here on, this story is only possible without the physical presence of Doreen. But because it's a continuing story, a story of evolution, of the continuous journey through eternity, the belly hollowing, belly bottom cramping, gut-wrenching grief that you feel doesn't end when the chapter ends. It becomes part of the next chapter. It becomes part of the necessary learning that must take place if growth is to be experienced. Every day I cry still. Every day. Does that mean I'm in a constant state of mourning? No. It does mean I'm allowing myself to experience the grief process without wallowing in it. Arthur Elizabeth Gilbert says, and I quote, you find the holy grail of yourself in the wasteland of your grief. This means that in the process of grieving, I must recognize the eternality of life. I must acknowledge that we have a spiritual identity which is permanent and eternal. I must be willing to free my mind from the belief in a bondage to the physical body, its organs and functions, its varying degrees of health. I must, without doubt or question, believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding, as stated in our Declaration of Principles. And you need to read those Declaration of Principles. These are my lessons. Eternity is a long time to live in ignorance. So if an opportunity presents itself to learn something, take it. It doesn't matter what you're learning as long as you're expanding your mind. God is in the details, the small stuff and the grand stuff. So since we know that we are part of an infinite mind that responds to our thoughts and habits, Every day, we should be adding to the good feelings, growing good and better habits, cultivating cheerful attitudes, and showing kindness and gratitude as often as we can. I have another affirmation for you. I am bathed in pure spirit, in living life, in everlasting goodness. Together, I am bathed in pure spirit, in living life, in everlasting goodness. Say to your neighbor, you are bathed in pure spirit. In living life, in everlasting goodness. <clears throat> Our Hopi elder continues. There is a river flowing now very fast. It is so great and swift that there are those who will be afraid. They will try to hold on to the shore. They will feel they are torn apart and will suffer greatly. No, the river has its destination. The elders say we must let go of the shore, push off into the middle of the river, 
Keep your eyes open and your head above water. And I say, see who is in there with you and celebrate. At this time, we're to take nothing personally, least of all ourselves. For the moment that we do, our spiritual growth and journey comes to a halt. Banish the word struggle from your attitude and vocabulary. All that we do now must be done in a sacred manner and in celebration. We are the ones we've been waiting for." End quote. <laughs> Trust the process, my friends, scary as it can sometimes be. God is the eternality of being, the creative principle of its own being, ushering us through eternity, that ever-expanding field of consciousness unfolding. The journey continues. Namaste. Wow. Mm -hmm.